We thank you, Lord, that, that you've got a plan and a purpose, Lord. And we don't want to find ourselves struggling against your plan. We want to walk with your plan. We want to keep our eyes open. We want to be awake, as the song has said. We want to be right there to see what's going on, Lord. You're, you're educating us. You're teaching us. You're preparing us. You're sorting through. You're, you're, you're sifting us. And we, we feel like we're on the threshing floor right now, but maybe we are, Lord. Because uh, I thank you, Father, that you're showing us who you are and that you are faithful. And we're going to stand with you, and we're committed to stand with you and with each other until we see your truth come forward and be manifest on the face of the earth in Jesus' name. So tonight I just want to basically uh, just talk about these pictures I put together. What does faith look like? And the scripture is, uh, actually, I, I think that was Luke 18. I uh, don't seem to have written it down. But then Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up. And there's the parable, of course, as the unjust judge. And it ends with, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? And the whole point is to say, okay, we're running through a scenario right now where all these things are happening. And at some point, we know there's going to be justice. At least I believe that because I believe that's what God's all about. Is at some point, say, well, why doesn't God come down here and fix all this mess? And the answer is, he plans on doing that, and he will. But the question is, when he gets here, will he find faith on the earth? Because all of this has a purpose. And the purpose is to produce a bride. And so he's watching. And the, the whole drama and the scenarios and everything we're seeing is here to sort out what's in our heart. And I think he's watching very closely to see. Because when he comes back, he's building his kingdom. And his kingdom is being built with people to rule and reign. But who are those people and what are their positions? I believe a lot of that is happening right now. And that's the decisions that are being made. We're in such an incredible period. And I call it the bonus round. Bonus round is in, in a game show is when they have all these uh, multiplied points to catch up from everything that you might have missed earlier in the game. It's, the questions are harder, by the way, usually in the bonus round. But they're worth a lot more points. Well, I sort of sense that right now we're in that kind of a bonus round. I don't know what you were before or what your situations were, but right now you can make up a whole lot of ground in the kingdom by believing and standing. And we look at the situation and we see the prophets out there. How can we say, well, I don't know what's going on. Oh, really? Well, why don't you ask God? And it's being confirmed in the unity of the Spirit. I've never seen it like this before. I've never seen so much unity in the Spirit. At the same time, just complete opposite of the world. And the world is doing everything it can. I mean, it's amazing to watch. No, you can't say that. No, we're going to throw you off this or that. Or, or Facebook, or YouTube, or whatever else. No, you can't say that. No, you can say all this stuff, as long as it's what we want you to say. But all this stuff, no, 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 that, that's, that's false, that's this. So we're looking at this thing, and we're seeing such a difference. And that difference is what I call the faith multiplier. And what I mean is, uh, if you have money in the stock market, then once a month or so from your stockbroker, you'll get some sort of a statement with a number on a piece of paper. And if you get a big number, then you're wealthy. If you get a small number, maybe not so wealthy. But you get this thing to see how you're doing in the stock market. However, you really don't get that from the kingdom. I mean, it, at least I don't get it. Maybe you do. But I don't know how I'm doing. But if I did, we would see what's, what matters and what doesn't in the kingdom. Because we don't know how our investments are working in the kingdom. But he's told us that. He told us uh, the church of Laodicea, where we're living. He says, you say that you're rich, but I say you're poor. In the world, they're rich. But their bank account in the kingdom, not so much. But you go to Smyrna, and he says, 
You say that you're poor, but I say you're rich. So which one do you want to be? I mean, do you want to be rich in over the earth and poor in heaven? Well, I don't think so. Not this crowd. We're in it for him. He is our reward. The rest is just bonus points. And, and I, so I'm looking at this thing saying we're in that season now. And, and I don't know what the outcome's going to be. But to be honest with you, what's really important is will the Son of Man find faith when he comes? He didn't say, do I find people that are rich or find people that are right or people that... He says, will I find faith? Will she be faithful? That's the real question. And that's why when I look at it, it says, what does faith look like? And I got two pictures. So which one is the right one? Both. Can you be both? Can you see it? Can you see that both are a picture of faith? And I believe there's a time for both of them. And, and this is what he's coming back for. And this is our moment to determine, is that us? Will he find faith when he comes? Notice he says. So he's talking about his return. When he's saying, I'm ready to set up my government. Am I going to find people that have stood with me and believed me over what the world has said? And when we got all the world going one way and the kingdom going the other, the bonus points are high. And I think, what an exciting time to be alive. God, this is going to be real exciting. And, and I know you're going to come through, but if you don't, you know, you're going to look pretty silly here. Me, I don't care about me. I care about you. And I think that's the key. We just trust the fact that I don't care if, if I say all these things and, and they say, well, you, you know, you were wrong or you were this. I did it by faith. That's what pleases God. Because I believe in my heart he said something. He said, we're going to have to have fair elections in this nation. And I'm going to uncover, and with your help, of course, and I went through last week the difference between what I consider to be um, God's sovereignty versus conditional. And that I believe conditional means prayer matters. Sovereignty do- means it doesn't. I believe it does. And I believe what we do right now is important because it's not about the outcome of the election as much as it is the outcome of his bride. You know, and if it was, well, I'd rather you guys go through it all now because that's going to produce a better bride. And we're going straight into the, you know, we're going straight into the tribulation. If that was God's will, I believe that's what he'd be telling us. (laughs) But if he says, no, no. Yeah, someday they're going to do that. But this is not that time. And therefore, it's important that you stand and fight. Because now I'm sorting out, when I do come back, who's going to be my bride? What an exciting time to be alive. So what does faith look like? Well, it looks like both of these things. And if you're not doing both of these things, then I don't really think, I think you've got a problem. I think you need to take another look at it. Now, I I put some labels under this because in a way, one picture is our face toward him and the other is our face toward the enemy. That we want to look this way to him, but when it comes to the enemy, this is what I want him to see. I'm standing and I'm not moving. And you're not going to come this way. So I think that this is us. But the question is, who is our enemy? And I want to talk just a little bit about that. Who is our enemy? What is the plan? Because if our face is toward the enemy, what is the enemy? And I think we all know there's a deception out there. I'll tell you what our friend is, is the truth. We've got to get to the truth. And, you know, we talk about the election. But the fact is, if the election proves that the people chose one way, but we believe another then we'll go with that because the people chose it. And because God gives people choices. But as far as I'm concerned, 
until we know that, as far as I'm concerned, I'm standing with what he says because there's, he's going to have to tell me. And he say, well, you're just believing all these prophets out there. Well, you know, we talked about that. We talked about what Second Chronicles twenty twenty. Believe his, believe his prophets and, and prosper. But the fact is, it's not because I believe his prophets. It's because my spirit believes this. And I'm going by what's in here. It's great to have all the prophets believe this. And that's amazing. I just You look at them and they're not flinching. <laughs> I mean, God's given us... I mean, can you imagine what would it be like if you're the only one? But man, do we have a, a, such a cloud of witnesses right now. I mean, how can you not believe, in my opinion... But that's just me. So who is our enemy? Well, Ephesians 6.12. And Ephesians is such a book for the bride, right? Because we believe this is an Ephesians 4 house. We believe in equipping the saints for the work of the ministry. We believe in the five-fold ministry. Our, our ministers are there to equip other people in their ministries. Well, that's Ephesians 4. Ephesians 5 is about the bride. And then Ephesians 6 is another kind of warfare. And that's what we're talking about here. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of His might. Put on the full armor of God so that you may be able to stand firm against the schemes of the devil. Now, you'll notice I highlighted a particular word here in blue. Against. Yes, we are to stand in in weapons of warfare. He makes it clear, stand firm against the schemes of the devil. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against rulers and against powers and against world forces. You see what I'm saying here? This is, this is not just an individual. This is a conspiracy. But notice it says world forces of darkness and spiritual forces of wickedness in heavenly places. So we're to deal against not only the spiritual forces, but the worldly forces. We're to make a choice here. And we're to stand against these things that are, that are the schemes of the devil. It's that simple. There is who our enemy is. And so our enemy is the spiritual forces and the world forces that are perpetrating the schemes of the devil. It's that simple. Everybody says, oh, it's all spiritual. No, there is some things that you've got to do. Right. Sometimes you do come out of the prayer closet. Sometimes you have to declare things. Sometimes you have to do different things to stand. So th that's our enemy. And we need to stand against the world forces and the spiritual forces. And I know people say, oh, it's all a conspiracy theory. No, it's not a theory. It is a conspiracy. I mean, look around, folks. What one person could orchestrate all of that? Come on. Do you see, you see the agreement on the sides here? I mean, it's amazing how widespread this thing is. How could, one person couldn't possibly do all of that. It is a conspiracy. They're all in agreement. Well, where do they get this? They get it in the spirit because there is a spiritual conspiracy out here. This isn't just one person doing something. We're not, we're not really voting for two presidential candidates. You know that, right? It's not one person versus the other. It's, uh, th that's not what our vote's about. It, it's literally about two worlds, two outcomes. Two, two, we don't know how large the schemes are. To me, I see it as globalist and nationalist. And, of course, for me, why I see it the way I do is... There's a difference between globalists and nationalists. The globalists, the original globalist, was Babylon. That was it. Let's build a tower. And that tower, we says, it'll keep us together and we'll have one world order. They didn't know that they were building a tower for the devil to fulfill his prophecies. I'm going to come in and sit on top of it when you're finished and rule the world. Well, but, but God came and he confused him and he, put, he scattered them into nations. And the, those nations is what keeps the devil from being able to bring this together and sit on top of it as we build the devil's kingdom for him. 
And so we know that there's globalism and nationalism. Nationalism is what destroyed the Tower of Babel. If you go global, guess what you're going to end up building? Yes, as a matter of fact. Do we see that in prophecy? He declares the end from the beginning. In the beginning was a wedding. What's going to happen in the end? And also in the beginning was Babylon. So what's going to be in the end? Right, the, the true bride and the false bride. There's your two governments. And, and that's, where we're, that's the battle we're fighting right now. We're not fighting a battle between two individuals we think is going to run this nation. I wish it was. Then we can say, well, I, I, like, I, think, I like things painted green and you like things painted blue. That's a political fight. Let's argue about it. That's fine. But that's not what we're doing. This is global forces that we're dealing with. We're dealing with the nationalism versus the globalism. And, and, you, and Joanna mentioned that. So that's the, the forces that we're fighting against, world forces. Oh, let's see, where am I? Yep. Uh, so Ephesians 5. You, we, by the way, we sang this. <laughs> And we, you know we don't get together and ever talk about what we're doing, so it just happens. Do not participate in the useless deeds of darkness, but instead even expose them. And by the way, we're back in Ephesians 5, the bride. For it is disgraceful even to speak of these things which are done by them in secret. Now, are there people doing things in secret? Oh, how can that be? I thought everything, we have media, right? In the media, well, we'll go on to that. Uh, obviously, they're the, the prophets that sit at Jezebel's table. We know that. But all things become visible when they are exposed by light. We sang that. For everything that becomes visible is light. For this reason, it says, Awake, sleeper, arise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. And I believe God is going to shine on the situations of this election. That light is going to expose what's going on. And we need to deal with it now. If we don't, then what are you having for your children and your grandchildren and everything else? What are you leaving? The, the enemy has full control and power if we don't get to the bottom of the truth. The nation right now is split in half. Now, both can't be right. There is only one truth. Now we're saying, well, we want a revival. What is the first thing that happens with a revival? What starts a revival? Prayer, Prayer and what does that bring about in people? Repentance. Don't revivals start with repentance? Yeah. Well, if they're starting with repentance, what are you repenting of? You must have truth. Exposed truth is what starts repentance, which starts revival. So the only way to bring this nation together, we're not going to come together and, and negotiate this. That ain't going to happen. There's only one hope, and the hope is the truth has to be exposed. And then repentance can come, and then we can come together. So this is what it's all about. Awake sleeper, arise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Thank you, for, Joanne. I don't know you, how you do that every time, but <laughs> that was amazing. So then be careful how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of your time because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is here. Well, the Lord's trying to make his will pretty clear. So you remember the wise and the foolish discussion last week? The five virgins, the ten virgins, five were wise and five were foolish, right? There's your wise and your foolish right there. It, he's talking about a bride. Second Thessalonians 2. Then the lawless one will be revealed. So one side shows lawlessness. That's the Antichrist. Then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will slay with his breath of his mouth and bring an end to the appearance of his coming. That is, the one who is coming in accordance with the activity of Satan. There's your conspiracy again. This is all... This isn't... Uh, just a better plan for everyone to prosper. There's a plan here that's the activity of Satan. It's a plan to rebuild the, the Tower of Babel so he can sit in there and rule over the world. 
I will exalt my throne above the heavens and above the clouds, right? So he's got a plan, and it is a conspiracy. With all powers and signs and false wonders. That's in the spiritual realms, too. And all deception of wickedness for those who perish because they did not receive the love of the truth so as to be saved. We must be wise, we must be ready, and we must love the truth. But it's interesting he used the term love. He didn't use the term obey, did he? Love the truth. So what does love look like? Which one is love? Right. If you love something, you eagerly seek it but you also defend it with your life. Do you love the truth? Then we need to get to that. What must we do? Reveal the lies of the enemy. Search out and declare the truth from God. Fight and overcome. And let me just give one word. The war is raging in the hearts of men and has erupted into the world around you. This comes as the evil deceivers of the world get more bold and more desperate to seize the day. But you will stand and speak my truth in the face of the attack. You will break the powers of the lies that poison the hearts and minds of the fearful and confused. For now is your moment to fight the good fight of truth and faith by believing and speaking my words. For you have received power to be my witness and to declare and demonstrate the power and authority of my word and my name. For as I anointed Jehu, I am anointing my ecclesia to bring righteousness and justice to the hearts and minds of those in the bondage to the lies of the evil one. So rise up, O servants of the king. Rise up, O warriors of the kingdom. Enlist and engage in the fight. Set the captives free. Give sight to the blind. Heal the brokenhearted, declare my words of truth and life, and stand strong as I confirm my words with signs and wonders. Father, we stand and we take, right now we thank you, Father, for receiving, receiving that which you want to give us, Lord. The anointings of Jehu to break the deception over the enemies and and all all those that are minions of Jezebel and Ahab. I thank you, Father, that Jehu was anointed to take down that global empire of government. And that, 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 Lord, right now, I even pray for President Trump that he has a Jehu anointing to be able to to clean out the house of Ahab and Jezebel. The, The global rulers, Father, that are trying to take down and control this nation and to take out the prophets that eat at Jezebel's table, the media. I thank you, Father, that we're in this war to see this nation restored to truth and to, and to a worship of the true and living God. So, Father, we ask you just to, to, to touch our hearts, to give us the words to speak and declare. Show us how to use your anointing of, of truth, how to use the authority that you've given us. Give us revelation of what's really happening. We seek to enlist and engage in your fight and to set the captives free. Restore sight to those who are blinded by this deception. To heal those who are brokenhearted by the things that are going to be happening. And we declare your words of truth in life and we stand strong. And we thank you for confirming what we're going to do in signs and wonders for each one here. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.